Hello, this is Professor Singham. I'd like to introduce you to this topic of reading from input files in Java. I've done some work in the class. This video is basically to re-emphasize what I've done already. Uh, there will be some follow-up videos. So this is like video one of five. Basically, reading from the keyboard, you know how that is done. We create a scanner object. We call it keyboard new. We call the scanner class constructor. We pass to it system.in. So system.in is the stand in for your keyboard. So it's a, a Java representation of your keyboard. When system.in is passed, basically the keyboard object that I'm creating in the RAM gets connected to your physical keyboard and it, overall object looks something like this one that you see here system.in is embedded inside the scanner and that scanner we are calling keyboard uh, something similar happens when you are reading from the input file <coughs> so let's uh, look at the steps for that so step number one is you need to get the file name and the file name can be either the full or absolute path or the relative path in Windows operating system. Okay, here we'll only talk about the absolute path. An absolute path is the file path is starting with drive letter separated by slashes, the folder names, and finally ending in the file name. So here below we give a generic pattern for the absolute path. You're going to have a drive letter C if your file is on the C drive. If it's embedded in many folders, then name of the first folder, slash, name of the second folder, slash, uh, names of other folders, slash, file name, dot extension. Extension is needed as well. So that's the first step that we get the file name. How we actually do it in the code, we are going to show you when we do the code in Eclipse. Then step two is that bind this file name to a file class object and to read from the input file Java requires us to first bind the file name to a file class object this binding is done by the following type of code line we have the class name file here the variable name f equal to new file this is the file class constructor and we pass it the file name string and this string contains the absolute path to the input file okay so in this code the name of the file stored in string file name has been passed as an argument to the file class constructor and once this code line is executed this binds the actual physical file to this java object f that we have created okay then step three is we bind the file class object to a scanner object so file class object we created in the previous slide is bonded to a scanner class object through a code line like this one. We have the scanner, this is the class name, fread is the variable name, new scanner, this is the constructor of the scanner class. Earlier it took system.in when we wanted to read from the keyboard, but now since we have a file to read, this file object f that we created in the previous slide here, uh, basically is passed as an argument to the scanner class constructor. Once we have done this line here, this object fread is ready to read input file just the way keyboard object could read input from the physical keyboard. And the next slide shows the summary view of the whole process. So this is the summary view. We create a file f, new file, we put the full path, absolute path to the input file and that will be the file name string that will bind the file to the file object f and then we just pass that here to this scanner object the scanner f read equal to new scanner and next slide shows the composite mental picture of the object f read how does object f read looks like you can conceptualize in your mind like this one that we have input file name it is embedded inside the object of type file the object of type file is embedded inside the object of type scanner okay this is the short version of the same code 
So this picture is very important because it helps you understand the layers of the software that are involved in reading from the file. This kind of software is called layering the software. So inner layer has the file name, then it is embedded inside the file object, that's the second layer. Third outer layer, the scanner, which embeds the file object and this input file name object. And then this last layer is the one that we are able to use uh, in our code to read the file. So now we proceed to Eclipse to show you how to write the code for this. <coughs> so I already have a main class and main method. So we are going to need a two scanners in this case. One is scanner to get the input file name from the user. So that will be our standard keyboard type object. We have done that in the past. Equal to new scanner. Uh, system dot in and since I need an import here, I'll just say import Java dot detail dot scanner. And since I got the keyboard object, I can type the file name from the keyboard or copy and paste that. So now I need to. I need to prompt user to enter the full path of the input file name. So enter full or absolute path to input file. We say that and then we declare a string file name and we use our keyboard object to get that input. And in this case, we use a method called next line. Next line method is important here because in Windows environment, file and folder names could have blank spaces. Our method next does not get blank spaces. It will just get the string of text until it sees the first white space. So we cannot use the method next. We have to use the next line because that gets the entire line that has the absolute path to the file, which may include blank spaces in Windows. So on line 8, we get the file name. Now we do the things that we showed you in the PowerPoint a minute ago. We create a file object, file f equal to new file, and we pass the file name. Okay, now I see some red lines here because file class also needs an import. So we import that one. And now uh, we're okay. And finally, we bind the file object I created on line 10, which is F, to the scanner object. This scanner object is the one that is going to read the file. So I say F read equal to new uh, scanner. And to this I pass the file object and that works fine except this also has a red line so let's see what that is saying and it's saying that unhandled exception type file not found so let me fix this first and then explain what that is so it added this piece of code here throws file not found exception the reason this is needed is that if I don't put this here uh, Java was designed to be an extremely safe language, so inventor of Java were worried that when I create a scanner like this one, which is bonded to a physical file, what happens if file is not found at the time when I run the program? If file is not found, that means the program cannot do anything. That's an error condition. So ideally speaking, I should put the extra code in my program to resolve that error condition. Okay? But at the same time, Java gives us a way out of it that I don't have to put that error code. Uh, so this file, file not found exception, throws file not found exception is the way getting out of writing that code that we are not ready 
to do yet. So these magic words simply say that, okay, it will accept this line without us having to write the extra code to handle that error which, could have been, which would be there if file is not found. It's really as simple as that. Okay, so after line 12, now object fread is ready to read the file and it, it will use exactly the same method that a scanner keyboard used. You would recall that keyboard.nextint got us the integer. Keyboard.next double got us the double data type. Keyboard.next got us uh, a single piece of text which is delimited by white spaces on either side. Uh, Keyboard.next line you can see right here got us the entire uh, line. Okay? So we want to just read a file and just print it to console. Uh, I would like to show you the file first that we are going to read. This is the file I'm going to read. It has these lines, today is a hot day. The script brown fox jumped over a daisy dog and so on. And <clears throat> what I would like to do is I like to print this to console. So to read one line, you can just use the next line method with a read. That would be no problem. If I want to read the entire line, I want to run a loop so I can read one line, print it, read the next line, print it, and so on. Now, there's a facility in, in fread or in the scanner class which is called a method called has next line. So basically, uh, F, <clears throat> F read dot has next line returns true if there is a line in the file to read. And if there is no line to read the <coughs> f read dot has next line returns false. And that would be the case if file is empty. It reads the very first character which is the end of file character and it returns false. It, that will also be the case that it has finished reading all the lines and it's reading just the end of file character. So it's pretty easy to design that loop. What I do is I design a loop called while <coughs> while uh, fread dot has next line while this is true I read a line, I define another string line and I just use exactly what I did here. Here I was reading a line from the keyboard, now I'm reading a line from the file, so I say f read dot next line. So in the first iteration of the loop, on line 18, the first line from the file will be read and stored in this variable here called line. If I go back, in the first iteration it's going to read, today is a hot day. And then, <coughs> I just want to print that line to the console. So that's simply done like this. And I just pass it the line. Okay? So this loop will keep running. Let me just show you schematically here. In the first iteration, it will read this line. In the second iteration, it will read this line and print to the console. In third iteration, it will read this one and print to the console. In fourth, this print to console. In five, this. Sixth iteration, this. Seven, this one. Eight, this one. Nine, this one. In tenth iteration, it's going to read a hidden character that you don't see here, which is called end of file character. And then it will return 
has next line method return false. So at that time it will exit the file reading loop. Okay. <coughs> All right. So there's one step which is the last step in reading from a file that you have to close the object f read that you created because unless you close f unless you do this line 22 which says f read dot close the file is still open and somebody in the shared environment like unix may need that file okay so that is very important that you close the file at the end okay <coughs> so this is it so now we can run this program so to see how that works so I do run as Java application and here it's asking me for the absolute path of the file what I've done is uh, file name could be long sometime it is error prone to type them although that can be done so what I do I caught I put the file name into a notepad complete path of the file name and that is the path to my file that I was showing you a minute ago so I just copy and paste that here and then I press enter and there you go and now you can match what we outputted here with this file line by line and you'll see they're identical okay here we go so you can see today is a hot day the quick brown fox jumped over a lazy dog yesterday was a cool day the quick dog jumped over a lazy brown fox we are now in the desert sandstorm is, storm is blowing ostriches are running we enjoy in our tent night is so great okay so this little program showed us how to complete all the formalities of reading from an input file and use a loop to output that file exactly to the console including closing the file okay that's first video of the series of five in the next video I will show you how to print something to an output file okay thank you